friends, and welcome to the Imago Nutrition Podcast, where we answer your questions and give you practical nutrition strategies to help you and your family flourish. We are back. It has been a little bit since we've done an episode together, but I am here. My name is Mark. I am with my co-host, Danielle, my business partner uh, and registered dietitian extraordinaire. And um, we have a great topic today, uh, a topic that seems to be increasing in, in frequency and conversation and awareness. And so we're going to be talking about the idea of insulin resistance, which if you've been anywhere around health conversations, nutrition conversations these days, you have likely heard of it. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about what it is, some myths around it, um, what we know about what causes it. Um, and of course, some practical strategies about how you can build a lifestyle that uh, either decreases your risk or all out uh, prevents um, the, uh, the, um, uh, the reality of insulin resistance um, in your life. And so uh, with that, Danielle, it's good to be back on an episode with you. It's been a little while, um, but how are things in your neck of the woods? And if you're new to the podcast, I am in the Nashville area and Danielle is in the St. Louis area. So how are things up in uh, the great state of Missouri? Good, good, very good. Um, Join the summer? Yes, that's good. We like the warmth down here too. So we like all the seasons. Might as well enjoy them when we got them. So, That's right. um, all right. Well, and if you have a question, by the way, you can always shoot those to us. You can head over to our website, Imago Nutrition, I M A G O nutrition.com slash podcast. There's a form there. You can submit your question. If you have a question about um, nutrition, healthy lifestyle, fitness, we do cover um, a few different topics, but we stay predominantly focused on nutrition. So if you've got a burning nutrition question, shoot it our way. We will consider that as a possible topic for a future episode. So with that, Danielle, um, I kind of mentioned kind of how we're going to walk through this in terms of kind of four general buckets. So would love to really turn the mic over to you to help me understand more and our listeners to understand more. Um, kind of what we know about insulin resistance, what it is, um, some myths, what we can do about it. So let's start just with um, a pretty um, uh, standard definition. Let's talk a little bit about what insulin resistance is. All right. So insulin resistance um, is when your body is not responding well enough to the hormones secreted by your pancreas insulin. Um, so insulin's job is to take the food that you eat and get it out of your blood and into your cells to be used. So I think of it as just a, you know, it unlocks the door um, of the cells so that you're able to use the food you're consuming. And if you're not responding well enough or there's insulin resistance, basically that food that you're eating is staying in your bloodstream. Um, which can make you feel tired, obviously. Um, so, and raising your blood sugars um, if it's consistent over time. Mm. Um, another name for insulin resistance is called impaired insulin sensitivity. And I really like that word for it um, because it's kind of describing what's going on. So you're um, having a lack of um, sensitivity uh, to the hormone your pancreas is secreting insulin. And so um, if I could jump yeah. in, so yeah, I, I love that too. So essentially you have um, a lack of opening that door. Correct. I, so it's like you have a decreased ability to open the door to the cells to transfer food, nutrients, et cetera, into the cells. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay, yes. cool. Yeah. So under normal circumstances, your body breaks down the food that you eat, it goes through the bloodstream to all different parts of your body, your muscle cells, your brain cells. And then to get it in those cells though, you need insulin to unlock the door. Um, and you know, after the sugar is out of your bloodstream into your cells, then the pancreas stops producing insulin. So that's how, um, the process ends. So that's under normal circumstances. Yep. Gotcha. So let's talk a little bit about like maybe the biggest one or two myths that you're hearing that we're seeing in conversations or around this topic. If you had to pinpoint maybe one or two of the biggest myths that are out there, because uh, we know that misinformation spreads up to six times faster than accurate information. So chances are a lot of the ideas being slung out there around this concept of insulin resistance are 
probably a lot of them are false. That's the sad state of, you know, particularly on the internet and social forums. So maybe what are one or two of the biggest myths that you see when it comes to insulin resistance and, and the topic of? Yeah. So what I hear most often is just that high sugar foods or high carbohydrate foods cause insulin resistance. Mm. Um, and so I think um, you really need to get a bigger picture. And that's what our episode is here for you today um, to just kind of understand a little bit more because that is not the full picture. Um, so obviously it's not wise to have high sugar foods frequently, um, and not great for your body, but it's not going, that's not what scientists have found as the cause of insulin resistance. Mm. Um, so yeah, if we, we're going to go into that next, but I think that's the biggest myth that I find, um, just, you know, not wanting to have a donut or a piece of cake, um, out of fear of insulin resistance or mm. going to cause diabetes. So there's other risk factors for these two conditions that can really, um, be more something you focus on to, you know, decrease the stress and fear, um, associated. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. And, and, you know, from a big perspective, that's a lot of what we want to do is move people from fear to freedom when it comes to an empowerment, of course, when it comes from nutrition and some of these considerations. So, and I think you're right. I think, you know, even in the, I engage on social media quite a bit. I'm having a lot of fun on threads right now. And I've seen two general camps uh, of diet culture that are really um, you, leveraging or almost abusing this topic of insulin resistance. And it's exactly what you said. And we didn't plan this. I didn't tell you this. But two of the conversations that I'm seeing this constantly pop up in is from the keto community. So folks that are a low carbohydrate, they're like, do keto so you don't become insulin resistance. I've also been having a lot of fun digging into research about sugar. Right. And so, like you said, we're not promoting high sugar diet, but when it comes to either weight gain, insulin resistance, whatnot, there's this anti sugar crowd out there as well. It says, in order to lose weight, you got to eliminate sugar. If you don't want to be insulin resistant, you got to eliminate sugar. I don't even think they know what they mean when they say eliminate sugar. Uh, but um, all that's to say, those tend to be in diet culture, the two communities that I'm seeing this latched onto the most is the low carb crowd and then the anti-sugar crowd. And so uh, again, we wanna strike that balance and find that healthy medium in all these spectrums of conversations, right? It's, you know, um, it, it's a lot about that, that middle ground and where the truth mm -hmm. often lies. But yeah, we started to get right into it. So um, let's talk a little bit about what we do know, what we have seen. I think this is an emerging area of science. We have a lot more to learn on this. Um, I know that you've mentioned as well that there isn't a, a direct diagnosis for insulin resistance. You like can't go in, get a blood draw and be like, oh, look, you're insulin resistant. But let's talk a little bit about what emerging research is showing about what causes insulin resistance. Yeah. I mean, I did think of one more, uh, Mark. Um, I think it's interesting. Sometimes I hear people say that insulin resistance cause weight gain. Ah, um, oh, yeah. Good call. And actually, it's the exact opposite. Uh, um, that, yeah. So... Um, actually what happens is when you're not able to use that, um, food that your body has consumed, it stays in the bloodstream and then you excrete it. Mm -hmm. So there's not, um, so that's why people don't actually want to take insulin because that does sometimes allow weight gain mm -hmm. because now you're taking the food that you are consuming and actually using it. Right. Um, so insulin resistance actually really cannot <laughs> cause weight gain. Um, if you think of it that way, um, you're, you're basically just resisting, um, the food and it's staying in your blood and making you tired because you're not using energy. So, and, and that's, um, that's interesting too, because I have seen uh, research and evidence that has shown, um, that insulin resistance actually causes a higher metabolic rate. They actually have higher metabolism than people without insulin resistance. I think the, 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 the experience is that they're tired. The experience is that there's a lot of other things or they, they might very well be gaining weight. Um, but I think there's this false association that, well, oh, if, I, if I'm insulin resistant and I'm tired and I'm gaining weight, it's because my metabolism has slowed. Though when controlled and tested, they actually show a higher metabolism. Um, okay. and I, I and love that you brought that up. Yeah. Because, yeah. so, and I know we could get into, you know, uh, the, the science of why that's the case, but from a, from a, 
a big picture perspective. That's yet another myth. And I hadn't planned on bringing that up either, but I have seen that in the research as well. Um, it's just interesting when you start putting these pieces together and take a look at the collective picture. And that's really what we're wanting to do here. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously you're, if you're really tired, it's going to be hard to keep up your regular activity. And that's more the reason mm -hmm. we're gaining weight um, than, you know, insulin resistance as the cause. So yep. yeah, yeah, I'm glad we clarified that. That was fun. That was a fun detour. That was a good, uh, that was a good off ramp there to a couple more points. So let's talk a little bit about what we do know causes or what we're beginning to learn about what causes, you know, the state of insulin resistance with people. Okay. Um, so there's some factors as always that are not, you know, in your control. Um, so, you know, but we're going to focus on the ones that are. And so two, two of the main factors scientists have uh, identified as contributing to insulin resistance are excess body fat mm. and um, lack of physical activity. So mm -hmm. um, excess body fat, particular around the belly region. And so that's kind of showing that the fat is around your organs um, and that can be the primary cause for insulin resistance. So, um, you know, if you don't have, um, a fancy, you know, percent body fat scale in your gym, or maybe it's just easier to grab a tape measure. Um, if you want to take a look, it's 40 inches or more for men mm -hmm. and 35 inches or more for women, um, for the increased risk, um, for insulin resistance. Interesting. <clears throat> Interesting. I tend to, I think that's fascinating. I don't do much measurement with myself or my clients, but I know we talk a lot about body fat percentage as well. Uh, so I don't have any direct data relative to insulin resistance or, you know, what starts to move that curvature up. But we do know in general health um, data that um, about tw well, 25 plus percent body fat for males is actually considered obesity level body fat. And, and I'm telling you, 25% on a male is not what you think it is. It is not someone that quote looks obese. And again, this is all based off health data where you start to see a massive increase in negative health outcomes of which, you know, insulin resistance is certainly a part. Uh, and then for females, obesity level body fat begins at 32%. Uh, there's some debate about that because you take a look at, you know, uh, lifespan studies, you see women that are about 35% actually live the longest. So there's some debate about 32%, 35%. Um, but whether you're taking a look at circumference, waist circumference measurements, you can also just Google, you know, body fat percentage by photo. There's a couple of websites out there that have done terrific job taking individuals at different body fat levels, taking photos of them so that you can just even visually understand your body fat level. So somewhere between that 40 inches for the males, if I heard you correct, and then the 35 inches for females, if you've got a tape measure, um, or if you're looking at, um, you know, body fat percentage, if you don't have access to, you know, a scale, I don't have a scale that does my body fat at home, I can confess. Um, I've done testing at places, I've done DEXA scans, I've done hydro. Um, but I, I tend to just use a visual guide that you can find online. So keeping that body fat percentage in a healthy range is so, so important for a vast, vast array of, of health reasons. So, mm -hmm. um, so sorry. So you went back, let's go back to, so you really talked about kind of the excess body fat and then, uh, lack of exercise. I have seen some, um, research as well that, um, in the positive sense, getting ample sleep mitigates the risk of increased insulin resistance. Um, and in general, we talk about seven to nine hours. So I imagine the inverse is true is that lack of quality sleep, lack of appropriate hours. If you're getting four or five, six hours a night, um, you need to be getting more. We were talking about this even before the show, Danielle, right? Like just the, you know, the amount of sleep that we get relative to what people think we might get. You know, I, I try to get a lot done in a day and people are like, oh, when do you sleep? I'm like, I sleep nine hours a night. And they're like, wait, what? You, yeah. Like, you know, like we sleep a lot and you sleep, Danielle, you sleep a lot as well. Yes. Like, and that's not even a lot. We should just say that we sleep an optimal a amount, amount. <laughs> you know? So, um, <laughs> So those are really kind of a couple of the big buckets. Anything else on that in terms of the causes or what we're seeing in the research? Um, well, I was just going to pause and say how physical activity um, allows for your body to be sensitive to insulin. Mm. Um, and it's basically because you're moving, you're driving that energy out of your bloodstream yeah. into your cells to be used. So that's kind of how it is a preventative um, 
you know, preventative measure, uh, against insulin resistance. So that's awesome. Um, physical. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. And, and it's actually like every other day is, you know, what's recommended, um, for just simply decreasing insulin resistance, um, and preventing diabetes is every other day for physical activity. Oh, very cool. Very cool. And, and again, when you hear physical activity to the, you know, um, keep in mind that we are big fans of doing more of what you love, right? Mm -hmm. So if you think you have to go out and start running, if you think you have to go out and start doing this or that running is awesome. Like when people come to me they're like, Hey, should I be running? I'm like, do you love running? They're like, I love it. I'm like, yeah, keep doing that. Some people come to me like, Hey, should I be running? I'm like, do you love running? They're like, no, I hate running. I'm like, then don't do that. You know, like figure it out. Like I, I, I played three soccer games this, this week. I played a little over 200 minutes of soccer because that's how I love to get my cardio in. I also like to strength train. I highly recommend strength training, but like whether it's biking, hiking, kayaking, whatever it is, playing Frisbee, playing soccer, playing disc golf, getting out there, find, do swimming, do more of what you love. Um, when we, when you hear us say like, be active exercise, don't, don't, don't revert back to like one or two things that you hate, you know, um, that you think you have to do in order to be active. So little, little, uh, tangent there, but just want to encourage people to, you know, live, of course, an active lifestyle, um, eat, like, as I like to say, eat well, train hard, sleep deep. Like that's, that's it. Like eat well, train hard, sleep deep. Okay. So, um, yeah. And, and even when it comes to insulin resistance, we see this start to bear out in the research that that's one of the best things you can do. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Little tangent. That's over. So That's get, okay. out there, get out there and <laughs> no do stuff, worries. people. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's talk practically a little bit about, I kind of, I kind of got ahead of myself, but let's talk a little bit about what we can do to fortify a lifestyle that, you know, mitigates, decreases the risk or all out prevents um, insulin resistance in our lives. Yeah. So um, I think first it starts with an understanding. Um, so first we didn't talk about this yet, but your body produces a different amount of insulin based on the meal you consume. Mm. Um, so just knowing that it's not, you know, a flat rate of insulin amount. Mm. Um, so if you're eating, you know, potatoes, chicken and broccoli, for example, versus a piece of cake, your, your body is going to know the difference and produce the appropriate amount. Mm. Um, and so that trust in your body and how it functions is key. And then also if you, you know, want to decrease the rise in blood sugar after eating, um, it would be to have a pair. So include protein or fiber or both with your higher carbohydrate meal or your higher sugar food. So for, you know, for example, if you have dinner, have the dessert with the dinner, not two hours later mm. when your blood sugar is back down to normal. Um, Love that. Super also practical. Also, it'll help you sleep better. <laughs> Super practical. Um, um, or, you know, for example, my kids wanted donuts this morning and I made, you know, made sure we had some scrambled eggs with it. So we're, we're balancing it out. So our blood sugar cannot rise as high. Um, and we don't feel like a huge crash at the end too. So, um, those, those things are really key because if you also take a look at one, you know, of the diet descriptions that, uh, um, increase your risk of insulin resistance, it's highly processed foods, high carbohydrate foods or saturated fats. Mm. So those, you know, a diet high in high processed foods, high carbohydrate foods and saturated fats, you can see there's not enough protein or fiber. Um, yeah. So that is, that's why your blood sugar is going up really high and falling down um, pretty quickly because we're not slowing the rise and fall. So that would be, um, a big key if you want to feel better <laughs> and, and um, decrease insulin resistance. And I was gonna yeah. say, like a lot of things in nutrition and in research, we see that, yes, it's the inclusion of those things. And just as important, it's the lack of inclusion of other things, right? And so like, this is a, this is a topic of research is like, when you're testing things, is it causal or is it what those foods are replacing or what's lacking? right? That causes that imbalance. So long story short, yes, like carbs are super important, but having highly processed carbs, high, your highly processed foods, high carbs all the time and a lack of that protein and a lack of that fiber. So when you balance that out, it doesn't mean you can't have high carb foods. You should have carbs. Um, mm -hmm. but again, it's, it's the balance with 
or the lacking of things like protein and fiber, uh, which by the way, when you become a client of, you know, ours, we're going to, we're going to talk to you about protein and fiber, almost irrespective of your goals, right? So when I work with athletes, when I work with weight loss, muscle gain, fitness optimization, you know, um, when you work with diabetes, high cholesterol, right? Like high blood, like we're going to talk about protein and fiber, uh, for many, many reasons. And that folds right into this conversation as well. So, mm -hmm. so what else on some things that we can practically do? I, I love that. Cause that's really kind of a mindset piece too, is understanding just how we're kind of looking at food, how we're, you know, looking at our meals, how we're thinking about our body's response to that. What are some other things we can do to prevent, um, insulin resistance? Um, just, yeah, I, I think balancing out the pleasure and purpose of eating. So you are enjoying those foods on occasion, but you're pursuing foods that are really good for your body and do what's best for your body. Mm. I think, um, that video you sent me, um, earlier this week, just that your relationship with food may need to change. Um, mm. if you are turning to food for comfort or boredom mm -hmm. or stress relief, um, we, you know, we need to be eating mostly when we're hungry. It doesn't mean on occasion we have to eat earlier to go to a soccer game or, you know, sometimes it has to be at a different time and we're not necessarily hungry, but listening to our body, um, so that we can, um, be a healthy weight. And then, like we said, get out there and exercise. Um, and if you want to know, you know, your protein or fiber goals, um, we'd be happy to help you with that. Um, so those are the things that are really in your control. Mm -hmm. Um, not, you know, not, um, the fear that's the fear and the stress is not what you, yeah. you really need to prevent <laughs> insulin yeah. resistance. So it's, hopefully this brought some clarity. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And I think there's just, there's holistic, you know, lifestyle considerations that th this is the, this is the part about health and nutrition and, and fitness that I love is that chances are no matter the question, the answer is eat well, train hard, sleep deep, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like people are like, well, that's boring. I'd rather you demonize sugar and pretend like that's going to fix everything. No, no. Like you need to eat well. You need to eat predominantly. We're talking 85, 90, 95% of the time you're eating whole minimally processed foods, things like the four pillars, which you can go on our website and look up the four pillars, um, you know, lean meats, seafood, dairy, fruits, veggies, whole grains, nuts and seeds. You're eating that 85, 90, 95% of the time. Doesn't mean you're on a diet. Doesn't mean you can't have other foods. Uh, cheesecake is not listed in the four pillars and I love me some cheesecake. Um, but I'm not eating cheesecake for 20% of my nutrition every day, right? Um, you're training hard. Uh, I highly, highly, highly recommend strength training. We are at a point in research where you cannot deny that strength training is arguably one of the most powerful modalities of exercise that you can participate in. I won't go down this rabbit trail very long, uh, from cognitive functioning to musculoskeletal, to longevity, to heart health, to body composition, to, uh, so many things, um, uh, from your brain to your feet, uh, strength training is incredibly important. Aerobic activity is incredibly important. Number one cause of death in America and the world is heart disease. Okay. Um, having a strong, healthy heart and a, and a, healthy body composition, um, is, is a look at this whole view of health as opposed to one particular issue and trying to focus in on that and fix that and uh, adjust your lifestyle around this one consideration while missing, you know, the mountains of whole nutrition, whole fitness, you know, sleep. Um, so at the end of the day, it's about eating well, training hard, sleeping deep. Okay. The other things mm -hmm. are just making mountains out of moles hills, to be honest. So, um, yeah, so that's, I mean, those are some of the big things is you eat well, you know, train hard, enjoy it. I love the, I love the, 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 you know, the moving from fear to freedom on these things. That's really huge. Thinking about your food, trusting your body. Uh, these are both, you know, kind of some mental disciplines as well as some nutritional disciplines and some fitness disciplines. Um, and it's a discipline even to get proper sleep. Like, Maybe a lot of people listening to this, when I said you should be getting seven to nine hours of sleep, they, they might have laughed. Even, yeah, right. Right. And, and that's that's a massive flag that you got to think about. Right. Like, why are you scoffing at what research has said is optimal for your health? Um, and so um, all that's to say, keep the big keep the main things, the main things. Right. Eat well, train hard, sleep deep.
maybe that's what we should call this episode. I'm not going to call this episode that, but that's, that's a <laughs> recurring thing that I'm starting to see in conversations is people love the fact that, look, if you eat well, train hard, sleep deep, a lot of things are going to start to work themselves out. So, well, this has been interesting. Danielle, thank you for walking us through it. I learned some stuff. Um, I hope, I hope all our listeners are encouraged by this um, and are empowered by it. And so there is a lot that you can do. You are in the driver's seat of your health. That said, if you could use someone in the passenger seat, uh, guiding you and helping you navigate the map, uh, if the analogy of a road trip, you know, continues, um, we are happy to do that for you, whether it's the topic of insulin resistance, whether it's anything to do with a diagnosis or a general health uh, goals that you have. Uh, we would love to hear from you. Reach out to us. And, and if you reach out to us, it doesn't mean you're signing up to be a client or anything like that. It just means we'd love to hear from you um, and understand what you're going through and how we might be able to help, uh, how we might be able to guide you uh, toward a healthier you. So if we can help, please feel free to contact us. You can head over to the website, Imago Nutrition, I-M-A-G-O Nutrition.com slash contact. Uh, there's, again, there's a web form there. You can send us a note with some thoughts, questions, considerations, and we will get back to you as soon as we can. So that said, uh, if this was helpful, please subscribe to the podcast. Uh, drop us a review. Uh, let us know how we're doing and share with a friend. We'd love to help as many people as possible. That's why we do this podcast. Uh, if you are on any of the social media platforms, you can follow us at Imago Nutrition. That's at I-M-A-G-O Nutrition. And as always, I'd like to thank the band Happy Pill for our theme song, Think About Food, because on the Imago Nutrition podcast, we are always thinking about food. We'll see you.